gas plants in Nigeria receive 1 million Naira U.S. grants. Central Bank of Nigeria exempts six companies from ban on importation of milk and dairy products. And Asian stocks in green as World Health Organization renames coronavirus disease COVID-19. You are watching Business Express reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Amina Nujain. Thank you for joining us today. Nigeria is set to get a grant of more than $1 million from the U.S. government for technical and financial work on a power plant project in the capital, Abuja. The U.S. Trade and Development Agency said the money will go towards 1,300 megawatts NNPC Abuja Independent Power Project plant. And NNPC will work with U.S. firms General Electric and Continuum Associates. This is part of gains from Nigeria's International Petroleum summit put forward by the US TDA and group general manager of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation NNPC Mele Kiari. We are joined by Benga Odusanya, executive vice chairman of Good Synergy, an independent power plant, as we explore Nigeria's energy market in the wake of falling commodity prices predicted on global uncertainties. Welcome to Business Express. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Let's start the conversation this way. The Nigerian Content Development Act is about 10 years. Now, after about a decade, what would be your assessment of indigenous companies, their contributions to the sector, and would you say they are where they should be? Oh, very good question to start with. Again, thank you for having me. Yes, to, to actually caption that, tomorrow I believe the president will be... <coughs> Uh, declare commissioning their massive edifice in Bayesa, and I think all the way leads to Bayesa. So that's one to show that they should they are where they are supposed to be and they've been doing the right thing. Now, going down to the line of their portfolios and what they do, the local content has been helpful to a lot of indigenous companies, to us, and particularly in the oil and gas industry, where I also play a, a, a very substantive role in the retail market. You know that, I mean, most of the funding for the modular refinery, the local content are supported for three, five, I know, I know of Watersmith, mm -hmm. I know of all the others coming in. Some of our also partners abroad are also looking at them. So, you know, they've been able to build that aspect of local content, 40% of whatever you come in to do here must be local production, must be taken from Nigeria. Okay, you say the president is on his way to no, buy up. It, it won't be on his way. He's going to commission it tomorrow. I okay. mean, you know he's in Addis Ababa. I don't know if he's back. Okay. But I know he will be on his way also to okay. tomorrow. If, as you say, everything is on course, yeah. if that project is being commissioned, yeah. what should be expected? Ah, I mean, if you, if you put a such agency down to show that we are local content and this is where we are, this is where we work from, there's nothing stopping an investor to come down to the country and say, yes, if... Local content can put this in place, then why am I not investing? That's almost about, I mean, I think the figure they were quoting is about several millions of dollars to put in the advices in Bayesa. That is confidence. Okay, talking that about is confidence. Talking about confidence in the yeah. energy sector, there's a lot of talk of um, reducing carbon emissions. Now, where would you say the sector would be going forward? 
That's another good question. Is it? I remember that I've uh, been part of this uh, carbon emission. Mm -hmm. And in actual fact, again, to buttress my point, the carbon emission pro uh, is part of my product I sell that reduces the carbon, the, the, the pollution that is out of the gas that when you buy your fuel. So basically, I mean, when the, CO7, uh, the COP17, 18, 19, I was part of it. I always attend. It's green. We've got to go green. Whether we do renewable energy or whatever we do, we have to go green. You know, it's at Zados. I have to come in here. Yeah. Talking about going green, yeah. the same way the world is shouting reduce carbon emission, yeah. there's a lot of talk yeah. of um, going is green. Would you say oil is being extinct, uh, is going out of fashion in the long run? <laughs> <laughs> what happens? You can't extinct crude oil. <laughs> and it can never be relevant because we still have to bundle it to bring that PMA, <coughs> to bring that gas, to bring that, uh, you know, so it's three layers. So <laughs> even the US, the story they have, that's the statistic we have today from the Nigerian uh, Investment Petroleum uh, Summit, mm. it shows that even the US have enough storage of more than in, 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 in more than 1,000 uh, uh, percentage of what Nigerian has. So the crude oil cannot go off. If the world goes green with lots of alternative mm -hmm. for energy. In, in progress. <laughs> at some point, oil will be irrelevant. Yeah. So what happens to it? <laughs> you know, these are testing. <laughs> they are testing the market to say, okay, I'll use my fossil, I'll use my hybrid. I mean, I, I, <laughs> you need a backup. Look at even putting a power generation on that, which mm. is what I'm doing. The first primary fuel you need to use is gas. Where is gas coming from? <laughs> it's extra of crude oil. So <laughs> are you going to abandon that? For a temporary measure that we cannot service out. If you put a solar in your house now, you can look at everybody that has a solar in their house. They also have three backup. They have the auxiliary plant, the generators. They also have a, a NEPA as one, which is where we call them backup. But I don't know. I know they are not backup. And you also have a, maybe an inverter again. Mm. So we can't we can't take out a crude oil. oil it's still going to be on board. Oil, oil is relevant. Extremely relevant. relevant. Extremely okay. relevant. Okay. Now we are talking about opening doors for foreign investors to come into Nigeria. What would you say the place of local technology would be? It's Nigeria. When the investment is right, the technology is what we have discussed again at the NIPS. It has to be a driven, just like the DPR man said today. He said it controls 20,000 of these uh, 80 hubs. But it can only do that by technology. You, you, can't, you can't have the kind of resources, human, human, human power who have human resources that will go all about the whole 34 states that they have. So but when you sit down in your office, yeah, you can access everywhere, you can track your car, it's part of technology, you know, wherever it's parked. So the technology is here, here. And then once we borrow the ICT from abroad and get it right, it's capacity building, it is done. One would argue that um, opening the doors for foreign investors would mean they are bringing their own technology and not necessarily developing Nigeria's local technology. Is that a valid argument? Well, it, it is a valid argument, just like I just said. They look at it, 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 most of the time, if you look at the bankers out there, they go to India to employ this technology. But the, actual, yeah, the idea is what I've said, like I said the DPR. It is to bring in it to be able to improve on the existing okay. where we are and to where we are going. So if I can access everything that happens around my plant, in my office or in my, even at, the, at my home, if I, don't, if I want to work from home, then I must have employed the use of some uh, expert from abroad. To and develop, that is where local, develop technology. local technology. And that is what is called capacity building. You, you see, I mean, it's a marriage. Bring them together. But don't forget it's also investment. All right, then. With the declining oil prices, you know, below the 2020 budget mm -hmm. um, benchmark, mm -hmm. what sort of partnership would you say should Nigeria be looking into going forward? Ah, well, like I said, the president is already doing that. Yeah. Uh, we just have to access more opportunities. At the last UK Africa Investment Summit, a lot of deals were opened. A lot of investment was cemented. And then you can even CDC group, they promised a lot of uh, investment in Africa. Um, the, uh, the Prime Minister of the uh, UK, Boris Johnson, promised that, they are, I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the substantial amount of uh, their investment will be in Africa, about $2 billion or so, because I was at the event. And then after he came back from there, the President is off to Addis Ababa, I'm sure he's coming, hopefully coming back today. And, you know, you have to access the market, and that's what he's doing. 
You're talking about showcasing Nigeria's um, energy potential, yeah. and the president and his team are already doing that. Doing that. Would you say more could be done? Uh, well, it, it, it's, to enable, it's, for, it's an enabling market here. That's what we need now. I mean, if you go out, you should make you should be ready for the investment, and I think that is being done by the NIPC. Because ready? I was part how of exactly? Well, that is exactly what I'm saying by NIPC, Nigerian Investment Promotion Council. If you if you look at it, you see that the Minister of Trade and Industry is always with him. So when you are telling me to come to my <coughs> industry, let all the put invest uh, the incentive, the potential, and also the enabling environment, let it be ready. And I think that's what they're putting in place now. You can attract investors now and tell them to come home, and they will see that yes, you can have your taxes, you can have I mean, all those boxes already with uh, the NIPS. And I think it was discussed also at the last uh, UK African Investment Summit. So, primarily, I think, I mean, we are getting ready for investors. Even with what we discussed at the Nigeria Investment Petroleum Summit ongoing now, which is going to end today, yes, Nigeria is ready. We don't need to uh, explore Ghana again. Let's build our country as well. All right, talking about building our country, what would your projections be for 2020 in the oil and gas industry for Nigeria? Mm, good. It's only one word. Just pass the PIB and let the market be the regulator. And you see that the sky is the limit. Even this investor we are talking about, in summary of what we are discussing now on the conversation we are having now, everybody will come down here and they come out. Because if I know that I can sell my market, I mean, you can look at the... the, 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 the the power market, regulated, C communication. So if you put out the oil and gas, and I know I can bring my market to sell, like that will buy. Once, it's if I know that I can even get my power yeah. at so-so amount, I will, I will pay, and then I don't have to do auxiliary price. The same thing with the uh, oil and gas. If I can go to my, I'm not saying it should increase, okay. pardon me, but what I'm saying is that if I know that this is the price I'm going to get it, mm. and it's available for me, and it's doing the work, I will enable it. Benga Odusanya, Executive Vice Chairman of Good Synergy. Thank you for joining us on Business Express today. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you too. My pleasure. 266.85 million naira is expected to be raised through privatization efforts to aid the 2020 budget in 20 transactions. Director General of the Bureau of Public Enterprises, Alex Oko, told finance correspondents in Abuja that calls for re-nationalization of the power sector is unjustified as efforts are on to address the weak links along the power chain. So, recapitalizing the discos, will this solve the problem? Well, maybe, maybe not. But what I will not advocate as an individual is the renationalization of the power sector, right? If we're able to determine that there is certain level of capital expenditure or capex that is necessary to improve the distribution infrastructure, then let us, you know, logically determine what that investment is and look at the best way to provide the investment for the distribution end of the power chain. The World Bank estimates that Nigeria needs $100 billion investment over the next 30 years to bridge her infrastructure gap. And still on investment, the Central Bank of Nigeria has engaged with some companies in the dairy industry as part of efforts to increase local milk production, its derivatives and dairy products. This was contained in a circular to all forex dealers by Director of Trade and Exchange Department of the Apex Bank. The circular added that all form M for importation of milk and its derivatives should be cancelled immediately. The six companies are said to have complied with the backward integration program to boost local production and consumption. And the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, injected an additional $210 million into the interbank foreign exchange market to boost liquidity in the sector. Dealers in the wholesale segment of the market received $100 million, while the small and medium enterprises segment received $55 million. Customers seeking foreign exchange for invisibles, such as tuition fees and medical payments and basic travel allowances, among others, were allocated $55 million. The Director of Corporate Communications Department, Isaac Okorafo, said the CBN's commitment to sustaining liquidity and ensuring stability in the market remains paramount. 
And on that note, let's see how the Naira is faring alongside other major currencies. News from outside the country says IMF Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva has urged low-income countries to take a hard look at how they are approaching their debt strategy. She was speaking in Washington at a joint event hosted by the World Bank looking at global debt. She called on developing countries to focus on using that money prudently with an eye on long-term as investors are globally increasingly chasing riskier yields in lending. IMF Managing Director reiterated that it's pertinent to improve transparency and improve reporting, saying that the outbreak of coronavirus in China and its spread globally as an example of unforeseen risk. Similarly, the World Bank President David Malpass has chided other development banks for lending too quickly to heavily indebted countries, saying some were helping worsening already challenging debt situations. He said there needs to be more coordination coordination among international financial institutions to coordinate lending and maintaining high standards of transparency. And the federal government is considering the possibility of purchasing grains directly from farmers against the current system of engaging contractors. This follows a request forwarded to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development by Farmers Association from Katina. The federal government is currently buying and stocking the country's grains reserve with food items as part of food security strategy. It's not only important to make sure that we have the grains in the silo, but the grain is safe. And uh, for it to be safe, we have to institute now and install an effective monitoring system where we'll be able to monitor on a continuous basis those variables that will assure quality. So what we have here today is the procurement under the guarantee minimum price for 2017 and 2018. The ongoing one is being taken to Busau. The government to buy direct from the farmers associations because to be sincere our farmers are organized and uh, we give them the quality input so that they produce quality products. And now moving on to global markets. Asian stocks rise despite coronavirus concerns. Bosse de Abel brings us up to speed with market activities outside the country. Asia stocks rose in early trading of Wednesday, February 12, as traders continue to monitor the impact of coronavirus outbreak as they take precaution over the ongoing global health emergency. Shanghai Composite gained 0.87% to close 2,926.9. Hansen Index 0.87%. Nikkei also added 0.87%. 0.74% to close 23,861.21. European markets also traded higher as China recorded its lowest number of new coronavirus cases since January. DAX advanced 0.68%, FTSE 100 0.39%, and CAC 40 topped 28 points to close 
at 6,083.55. In the United States, stock index futures had minimal appreciation. The Dow Jones Industrial Average decreased by 0 0.48 points, while the S&P 500 rose 0.17 percent. In Africa, the stock market had mixed figures. South Africa's JSA Africa Top 40 appreciated 0.42 percent, and Tunisia's Tunidex 0.14 percent. Ghana's GSA Composite and Nairobi's All Share were negative, while Namibia's overall index was flat. And back home in Nigeria, the Nigerian Stock Exchange All Share Index recorded gain at the close of trade on the 12th of February. It appreciated by 0.02% to close at 27,878.43 basis point, while market capitalization stood at 14.5 trillion naira. 81.9 million shares worth 1 billion naira exchanged hands in 2,414 deals. Most active stocks were the banking sector led by Zenith Bank. Access Bank led the gainers while Guinness led the decliners. Now oil prices are up despite demand fears. West Texas futures traded at 50.01 in early trade Wednesday, up by 0.89%, while Brent futures sold at 54.17%, recording 1.69% increase. Let's see the prices of other commodities on the domestic and international markets. And that's a wrap on this edition of Business Express. Be informed, all previous episodes are available on YouTube on NTA's channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter and the handle is at NTA News Now. Hashtag Business Join us again on Friday. I am Amina Nujain.